It's Thursday the 11th of November and if you haven't already seen my video from yesterday I would suggest you go and have a look at it because I break down all the news that came out yesterday with regards to the bombshell of what was said in the Court of Appeal. I've put a link up in the right hand corner if you'd like to go and watch that just click on the link up there and it will take you directly to the video. What I want to talk about today is I want to dig in a little bit deeper about the ramifications of what this exactly means and go into a little bit deeper detail of things that I may have missed yesterday. It's all over the media. But before I go into detail, of course, The Sun are notorious for their sly little digs. This is today's <laughs> front page. Isn't it amazing? I'm sorry, but it's blatantly calling her out for her lies, isn't it? It's, oh, it's probably one of the best ones I've seen since the New York Post did their Mexit one. I think it's comparable to that. Obviously, they're playing off the Mr. Men with the uh, Mr. or Little Miss Lies. I just think it is British satire at its finest. So... Bravo, some newspaper. Bravo. But what I will say is that yesterday's bombshell that she deceived the court because she forgot that she had corresponded with Jason Naff about what she would like to be included in fighting freedom could very well, and a lot of the journalists are now saying it, very well turn over this appeal because she lied. If you... I don't have access to Twitter. Well, I have a read-only mode, basically, which means that I can have a look. I can't follow anybody. Nobody can follow me. But I can still look. I can look at Scooby's Twitter. And he was very, very silent yesterday. He did put up a post about Harry and his misinformation, which was so tone-deaf that the majority of replies on his Twitter was literally, well, you're a fine one to talk, aren't you? You're going to get done for perjury. Now, I will remind you, in the court, what Scooby said in a witness statement, and this is when they were going for the judgment summary in September 2020. The statement said, any suggestion that the Duke and Duchess collaborated on the book is false. They did not authorise the book and have never been interviewed for it. While that is technically true, he didn't interview them, he did get stack loads of information from their communications secretary, who works for the firm, basically. Semantics. They knew and even discussed it. Now, what I didn't mention yesterday is Harry's response, which was equally as bizarre than Meghan's. But I just want to go over what Meghan actually said with regards to the letter she wrote to her father, because she had every intention. She knew that there was a high probability that this letter was going to be put in the public domain by Thomas Markle. In fact, she wrote it with that assumption in mind. She said, obviously, everything I've drafted is with the understanding that it could be leaked. So I have been meticulous in my word choice, but please do let me know if anything stands out for you as a liability. Given I've only ever called him daddy, it may make sense to open as such despite him being less than paternal. And in the unfortunate event that it leaked, it would pull at the heartstrings. Honestly, Jason, I feel fantastic, cathartic, and real and honest and factual. If he leaks it, that's on his conscience. But at least the world will know the truth. Words I could never voice publicly. I'm sorry, but that is quite vindictive. It's almost setting him up for a fall, isn't it? And I find it quite callous, to be perfectly honest, and cold. But the thing that, the one word that keeps coming in my mind when I read that over and over again is manipulating. So let's move on to our old Harry boys. Now, this with with regards to his communication to Jason Naff about Jason speaking with the authors of Finding Freedom, which is Omid Scooby and Carolyn Durant. Harry emailed, I totally agree that we have to be able to say we didn't have anything to do with it, i.e. the book. Equally, you giving the right content 
and background to them would help get some truths out there. The truth is V much needed and would be appreciated, especially around the Markle wedding stuff. But at the same time, we can't put them directly in touch with her friends. Also, are you planning on giving them a rough idea of what she's been through over the last two years? Media onslaught, cyberbullying on a different scale, perpetuating Thomas Markle, etc, etc, etc. Even if they choose not to use it, they should hear what it was like from someone who was in the thick of it. So if you aren't planning on telling them, can I? Harry even so much as emailed Jason Knaff and wished him good luck before his briefing with the authors. And they say they didn't have anything to do with it. Sorry, but that's perjury. She's been caught out. And this is the fact, I believe, that Meghan and Harry, deep in their hearts, believed that Jason would not spill the beans. But unfortunately, because they are no longer working royals, they are out of the fold and no longer protected. And let's not forget, it was Jason Knaff who went to HR about the bullying claims. He was the instigator because he didn't like what he saw or what he heard. I truly believe that Harry and Meghan thought that they were safe and that their secrets would not get out. And I cannot believe that she is saying that she simply forgot. This woman is meticulous at everything. She keeps journals and notes on every little detail or so we're led to believe. And you're telling me that she couldn't remember writing an email about the bullet points that she would like discussed and put down in writing and put the facts that she believed were true to the authors of Finding Freedom. So we've had Harry, who's lied, Meghan, who's lied, and Omid, who's lied. And more is now coming out about Jason Naff and what he said in his statement. He reveals that the book was discussed directly with the Duchess multiple times in person and over email. He says on November the 12th, 2018, that the Duchess asked to discuss the book with me that afternoon. He added that on December the 10th, 2018, I emailed the Duke about the book and included a list of topics that the authors wanted to discuss. I asked him to decide whether or not these should be shared with the Duchess as she'd requested to not be told about media stories or questions that involved her family. In relation to the author's request to be put directly in touch with friends of the Duchess, I advised that this was not a good idea and that being able to say hand on heart that we did not facilitate access will be important. I told Harry that I would meet the authors that week to help with factual accuracy and content. Later that day, Mr. Naff said he emailed Meghan a list of potential questions. The Duchess replied that evening saying, thank you very much for the info below. For when you sit down with them, it may be helpful to have some background reminders. So I've included them just in case. I know you are better versed at this than most, but assisting where I can, I appreciate your support. Please let me know if you need me to fill in any of the blanks. But of course, now we know that yesterday, Meghan had to put a new statement statement to the court retracting what she said. She said that responding to Mr. Naff's statement, Megan claims he raised the book in summer of 2018, but that she had declined to meet the authors and advised friends not to take part. She says she searched for the words finding freedom in her emails after the mail on Sunday's lawyers accused her of collaborating with the authors, but zero results were found. But in her new statement, she says, I now believe this was an oversight. She added, I had forgotten about the email communications I had with Mr. Naff in November and December 2018 and about his meeting with the authors. The Duchess also now says that she responded with some background reminders. So what does this actually mean with regards to the appeal? Well, her admission that she misled a high court judge, which was Justice Warby, could be a humongous turning point in this battle. Not only does it weaken the case against her, it also increases the chances that her former staff may also come forward and give evidence should the appeal be overturned and it should go to trial. If this goes to trial, you will expect to see at least three people, four, on the witness stand. Megan, Harry himself, Omid Scooby and Jason Gnaff. 
along with all those other staff members that would have been involved also. But a lot of people are asking, well, what does this matter? It was a privacy case. The Mail on Sunday published her letter. But their case basically sits on the fact that she wrote that letter with the public in mind and the fact that she says that she doesn't speak to journalists and that she avoids it, that her privacy was invaded. But by saying that she wrote that letter with the public in mind, and also for the fact that she's now admitted that she did cooperate, not directly, but indirectly, with the authors of Finding Freedom, that the Mail on Sunday at a and will be gunning for her credibility to have been undermined. And if she knew there was a high probability of that letter being published, and the fact that we now know that she was so meticulous in the wording and that it was meant that way to pull on the heartstrings of the public, it blows it all out of the water. What will now happen is the three judges that are sitting on the appeal, they will need to decide whether by misleading the court in the evidence that she previously gave in September, which has now been proven to be incorrect, whether that conduct amounts to perjury. And my oh my, in this country, it's a criminal offence that carries a maximum sentence of seven years in prison. Now I say, she's not going to get that, obviously. (laughs) I can't wish for that at all. But it's serious to perjure yourself in any court. It's serious. And you can't just say, oh, I forgot, sorry. But at the time in September, none of the witness statements or the majority of the witness statements could not be heard because they won a summary judgment. They were kept out of the public domain. Obviously now, the Mail on Sunday have appealed using some of their evidence, and I suggest there would be more as well. But you've got to ask the question that Justice Warby was not provided with the full possession of the facts when he made his judgment. That's now coming to light that in fact she did cooperate indirectly with the authors of Finding Freedom. Now what the court now needs to decide is that if Justice Warby had that information, would he have ruled a summary judgment? Now, Associated Newspapers, i.e. the Mail on Sunday, has also urged in the Court of Appeal that Meghan forfeited her right to privacy over the letter by using her staff and friends to give misleading briefings to the authors and to People magazine. Because we've got not forget People magazine. The reason why People magazine did that, and they were the, the, the five friends, can you remember them? They did the People magazine. The letter didn't come to light until after People magazine because they were literally attacking Thomas Markle. And it's my belief, and it's purely my opinion, that she gave the go-ahead for her friends to talk to People magazine because she wanted that letter in the public domain. Because remember her words to Jason Naff. Honestly, Jason, I feel fantastic, cathartic, and real and honest and factual. If he leaks it, that's on his conscience, but at least the world will know the truth. The words I could never voice publicly. Ta-da! So the question still remains that if Justice Warby had known that Meghan had told Jason Naff to brief the authors of Finding Freedom with disparaging stories about her family, would he have made a summary judgment? Because up until this point, the court had been told that Meghan does not know if and what extent the communications teams were involved in providing information for the book. Well, it's now crystal clear. She knew she was involved. She gave him bullet points. And so did Harry. Harry was very adamant about what he should talk about. And if Jason Knapp wasn't going to talk about it, he asked, can I? Now, the Telegraph have spoken to a leading privacy QC, which is a barrister, and they told the Telegraph that it's unlikely the court will regard this as perjury because judges bend over backwards not to call people liars. But if the judges looking into this case decide that what the Duchess has now admitted is a critical issue to the case, it's entirely possible that they will order a new hearing with a different judge. So cross your fingers, everybody. The crux of the matter is that she brought this to trial. She instigated the trial with Associated Newspapers Mail on Sunday while they were in South Africa. Can you remember? It was huge news on the last couple of days and it basically smarted all of their good work. And they just admitted that and they kind of put a statement that they she was suing them over privacy of the letter. She brought 
the privacy case to them. Now, if you haven't got all your ducks in a row and you're not telling the 100% crystal clear truth, then the Mail on Sunday will have its documents in a row for the appeal. It's exactly what they've done. You know, they've had to pay out over, at the moment, £400,000, which is just the beginning, and issue an apology. They've yet to do that because, obviously, the appeal. But if you're going to go up against one of the largest publications in the UK, you best believe you've got to be telling the truth. But what this has actually done done is completely shattered any credibility left granted there wasn't much of both harry and Meghan. so people are now asking well if they've lied about this what else have they lied about now i know don't shoot the messenger that we here and our little community have been saying this for so many years the lies that come out of their mouth we've just literally knocked them back 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 and proved them the Oprah interview is a perfect example of this. But a lot more people who were in favour of Harry and Meghan are now starting to go, whoa, well, she lied. What else has she lied about? And people are rightly saying, well, what about the whole issue of the, the racist in the royal family that they alluded to? People are now questioning everything they've said, and quite rightfully so, because their credibility is now in the mud, even more so. So... I hope that's given you a complete rundown of everything that has gone on. Hopefully we will hear pretty soon on whether or not the appeal is going to be overturned. I don't know when that will be. I'm not quite sure, but obviously I will keep you all updated. I really hope the appeal wins. I really, really do because it... (laughs) She lied. She lied. In a court. In a witness statement. How has she gotten away with this? I have no idea. Anyway, I would love to know your thoughts on this. Do you think it's going to appeal or do you think she's going to get her away with it again? I don't see how she can without any kind of pushback from her lying. Well, I think for me, the plus side is if it doesn't win the appeal, her credibility is gone down the pan with more people. And I guess the more people see what we've been seeing for all these years, the better. So as always, I would love to know your thoughts on this. Thank you very much for watching. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my YouTube channel, hit the notification bell and also that like button. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank all of my followers for all the tips and all the emails, DMs that everybody sends to me. It really is greatly appreciated. So thank you very much for watching once again.